Welcome back to Principles Engineering. We're still looking at our truss. This is part two, uh, and we're going to move right into our next assumption about a determinant truss. And that assumption says that if my truss is static, it means that the sum of the external forces in the x direction has to equal to zero, and the sum of the external forces in the y direction has to equal to zero. And that kind of makes sense if you understand that Newton's law says that a force, uh, a uh, mass undergoing an acceleration, uh, basically that equals to a force. So force equals ma. Uh, and what you're saying is the truss has a definitive mass. It's not undergoing any acceleration. Therefore, the force must be zero. So let's take a look at the special case here of f sub x. So as I look at the equations, so I say f sub x equals to zero throughout my truss structure, you're going to see that I only have one x direction force, and that is r f e x. And all that we're saying is that equals to zero. So that's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and label that force and uh, get that into here, and that is going to be zero. So going back to our y direction, so now I'm going to say the summation of my forces in the y direction have to equal to zero also. So what do I have in the y direction? Remember my convention, uh, up is positive, down is negative. So we're going to deal in up and down for the y direction. So what I'm going to say is the summation of the forces equals summation of forces y is the force at A plus the force at B plus the force at D or RFDY plus the force at E or RFEY. That all has to equal to zero. So let's plug some numbers in. So at A, I've got 500 pounds and it's going down. So that's as a minus 500 pounds plus the force at B. I've got another 500 pounds going down minus 500 pounds plus the force at D which is 1500 pounds up plus the reactionary force at E in the Y component has to equal to zero. Now I can do some pretty quick math here and I can end up and I can look at this and say hey this right here is minus a thousand pounds and this is 1,500 pounds, so minus 1,000 plus 1,500. This whole thing is going to result in a 500 pounds plus the reactionary force at E, Y has to equal to zero. Now you can see uh, real quickly if I take 500 pounds off of both sides of this equation. So minus 500 pounds, do the same thing on the other side of the equation. I now get I now get R F E Y equals to a minus five hundred pounds. Now what's that mean? All that that means is I drew it here with a force going up, it means my sign is wrong, my direction is wrong, because this means that the force is going down. Down. So let's go back into my force diagram here, and I'm going to correct that. And I'm going to erase the head of that arrow, and I'm going to fix it. We're going to make it go down. And I can also put in here that it is 500 pounds down. So that's down. All right, so awesome. So we saw two things here. Uh, we looked at our determinant truss. First, we solved for external forces by finding a zero moment. And then we took all of our external forces in the x and the y direction and said that if the truss is not moving, they have to be zero. They have to sum to zero. So in the x direction sums to zero, the y direction sums to zero, and we solve those algebraic equations. We also saw what happens when we get a negative sign. 
uh, it means that our initial assumption on the vector may not have been correct. So 500 pounds down at E. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to analyze a single point within the truss because if we said that it was static, the truss overall, and it's rigid, then it implies that each individual point within the truss is also static and unmoving, and we can assume that our force sums are zero. So that's next, point E.